Hello, my fellow private military company contractors. It's me, Jim. Do you like being a leader of mercenary group? Going on adventures, fighting monsters, upgrading your gear and getting stronger? RNG can turn in the game. <laughs> yeah, for that one you'll have to play Battle Brothers. But everything else we have here in War Tales. War Tales is a game of naming your characters, the stupidest names you can come up with, and doing everything I mentioned before, plus befriending all the animals in the forest. For the gameplay side of things, I would describe it as something like Mountain and Blade having wild and protected sex with XCOM and party management RPGs. You start by creating a small crew of four mercenaries from different backgrounds and choose a basic story for your party. I don't know if it affects anything story-wise, so treat it as just bonus stats for your party. If you don't know what to pick, apprentices are the most balanced in my opinion and you can always choose less carry weight. If you have problems with carry weight, you can just buy more horses. You also have a choice between two exploration modes. The terrible one, where you get absolutely destroyed for taking a wrong turn, and a good one, which is adaptive. Just trust me, I played 60 hours on region locked. It's not worth it, there are better ways to torture yourself. <laughs> if you want to feel the same pain as playing region-based exploration, find your closest CBT provider and ask him for help. After that, you can choose skills, appearances and traits for each party member. Skills consist of amazing abilities, such as Making sure party member won't die. Making sure party member won't die, but you will. Making sure someone will die, and probably the guy next to him too. Making sure you have footage for a 360 no scope compilation. And being a little bitch. Just make sure to take at least one medicine skill, so your life won't become a living hell. Also the horse can get traits too, and I'm scared to think about what bloodthirsty horses look like. And with the creation of hideous bands of mercenaries that employ such despicable human beings like old man, ginger, monk, and a woman, finished? You can embark on your grand adventure. And now you're out in the world, free like a turd in the wind to do what you please. Explore, travel the world, meet interesting people, kill them. You are free to go wherever you please, but for now you're locked in a region with only two ways of living it. Persuading border control by using 200 points of charisma, or doing the dirty work for the powers that be, also known as the main quest for the region. Sometimes you can cross the border for free, but it's like one or two times for the whole game, so don't rely much on being an illegal immigrant. After all, the game is called War Tales, not Mexican Simulator. Gameplay consists of four main mechanics. Party management. This is your basic mercenary leader stuff. Feed them, set up camp, buy fancy stuff for them, train them and resolve conflicts. This sort of thing. Economy. Mostly you get the job, do it, get paid, buy food and supplies, some better equipment and embark on a new adventure. Funny minigames for each profession your mercenaries can choose from. It's a part of the economy game, but I'm putting it here. I enjoy it so much, it's another game for me, and you can tell me how to order my lists. And battles. The most fun and exciting part of the game. There is some interesting stories to explore while doing all of that, but we'll talk about it later. Right now, let's focus on each mechanic closer. Party management. So, you got your party ready to fight, but when you don't engage in lowering carbon output caused by human existence, you gotta keep them fed, warm and ready to fight. So let's see what you're working with. This panel opens your party menu and shows all active bonuses when you hover over it. Next to it are your knowledge points. You earn them by walking around, learning about the world and crafting stuff for the first time. There is also a lot of stuff to unlock for each profession, best one is workshop by far. But right now take care of your plans first. You can send me later. Next to it is your local region story progression, more on that later. And suspicion level, you race it by stealing stuff and doing unlawful actions. In the middle we got time of the day and party fatigue. When it goes to zero, you have to rest. On the right you got happiness, the higher it is the better your life is. Influence, which you can use to hire mercenaries, resolve quests and improve attributes on level up. Valor points you use in battle. And food, which is just food, there's no wonders or anything suspicious here. And your war chest. But that's not all! On the bottom right, you got your camp, your inventory, map with all quests you took, compendium, same one as you saw before, and paths. Those are your playstyle enhancers. In this world, you can be an angry guy, a smug commerce girl, libertarian, and a guy who puts Greek statues on his profile picture. Hope you got all of that. Now let's focus on the camp a little more. All the items you build and the party members you have are objects you can move around your camp and assign them to do jobs. You start with something like this and end up with something like this. You should start by setting someone to work at the workshop. It will unlock your first companion page and let you build new stuff. A lot of things you build influence something in your party. A workshop creates tools to fix your armor and weapons after battle. Campfire raises moral. Cooking pot cooks pot. And the tent raises moral of two men sleeping together. Some constructions, like campfire, need to be right click in order to see what they do. Don't repeat my mistake of building strategy table and not using it for 10 hours. 
And now to your actual party. Any party member, even horses and rats, have unique skill trees and attributes to their class. Attributes are pretty straightforward. You raise them and you do stuff better. You can figure it out yourself. You're smart enough. Skill tree is where you decide how your mercenary will play on the battlefield. Is he a strong tank leading the assault? Or is he a fast and deadly berserk who rushes into the first thing he sees? That's up for you to decide. There are many interesting build variations, like an assassin who runs around backstabbing everyone on the map, as long as you have enough power, or an archer who controls beasts and can kill anyone getting too close to your party. You can adjust them to fit your own unique playstyle and to have fun with it. As for the economy, you got your standard stuff of getting a job, doing it and getting paid, but you can also haul goods from one city to another. There is no dynamic economy or anything like that, besides traders sometimes having a discount on stuff they sell. But other than that, it's a very straightforward economy where you earn money and spend them to make your life better. But what I like is the profession's mini-game tied to all of this. Tired of working for a capitalist? Want to seize means of production? Become a miner? Or a lumber? Or a blacksmith? Gather resources, play in mini-games and craft them into weapons and armors that sell way higher than the cost of resources you used to make them. Seizing the means of production is a lucrative business after all. You can even make the best weapons in the game that way. And you will need them to finish what great chairman Mao started. Also there is an added bonus of additional attributes for your mercenaries. And with all that covered, we finally get to the fun part. Killing people, animals, women, Reddit moderators and anything that moves. Before you start the battle, you decide where to place your soldiers. Positioning is one of the most important parts of the game, so you have to be careful with who you send to the front lines. Battles go in turns, with each party member taking turns one by one. When everyone has their turn, the round ends and everything repeats. You can use your party members in any order you like, while the enemy have to follow strict rules who goes after who. Enemies have their own classes and skills to fight with, both getting stronger and more diverse as you level up to keep giving you a good challenge. When you attack someone, those two people get engaged and can't attack anyone else besides their target. They can disengage, but usually this means getting hit with an attack of opportunity. And if your guy is surrounded by two team members, he gets additional protection. Or if you hate him and he gets surrounded by enemies, he gets more damage. So be careful with who gets double teamed in those situations. This is the gist of it, everything else you'll have to figure out, but here is an example of how one of my fights on my level 6 party goes. The guy with the shield rallies the troops to earn more valor for a party, buffs anyone close to him for additional protection and runs in to engage the most dangerous enemy. After he does it, our guy with a giant club goes in and swings it on anyone who made a mistake of staying too close. At that point, some enemies start taking turns and engaging some of our soldiers. If they engage someone important or weak, our berserker rushes in and kills them. After that, our uh, archer prepares zone of control to damage anyone coming close to a tank. And a beer and a rogue move into tank damage and backstab anyone who's engaged in combat. And after a few rounds, an almost losing our tank, we are victorious, ready to heal, repair our armor and to continue on with our journey. And now we have to talk about visuals. But I got a bit of a tangent, because I want to make a point about how those reviews will go in the future. You know how most of the reviews on big outlets focus on visuals in their reviews, saying stupid stuff like water is not realistic or a game looks dated for this generation of consoles. I find this to be absolutely fucking stupid, because there's nothing more wrong for this medium than to focus on visuals from the view of realism and using most advanced techniques. So we ain't talking about visuals, we are talking about only things that matters in games, art direction. And while you won't get such detrimental things like horse balls, shaking in the cold, the game has a perfect art direction. At no point did I feel like something looked out of place or strange. Every item and piece of gear looks like it has a reason to exist in this world. You look at characters and interiors in this game and you can understand why those things are there. Those asymmetric armor pieces? Yeah, spikes would come in handy when something tries to bite your head off. Map looks nice and stylish and you will definitely get some amazing views from time to time, but for the most part, it's just nice looking both on global map and in battles. Battle maps look the way they shoot for each terrain region and you get some spooky or downright gorgeous stuff to look at. And this is what art direction is for. Yes, it's not high budget AAA visuals, but they look good and that's what actually matters. So, as for the story, we are in some witch-like dark fantasy world, where occult monsters and extinct advanced ancient civilizations exist. There used to be a great empire that fell for undisclosed reasons. And on top of it, some sort of Rome-like civilization was created. They went on a war with a faraway region and everything was going fine until one day, the Covid happened, wiping out almost all forces from both sides and making some places a living hell, or, as I call it, Australian. 
Cure was eventually developed, but it's costly and the government Big Pharma conspiracy controls it for the most part. As a result, the previously united region is torn apart between multiple small entities with their own problems that you, greedy mercenary with questionable morals, can resolve. Killing a farmer trying to avoid taxes? No problem. A guy asked to spare him because he had to eat his dead parents. Help village people kill him and get amazing prizes. You can be a hero of the story or a total menace. Here is one of the first stories you will encounter in the game, so it paints a better picture of what to expect. You arrive in the region named Tiltren. They are neighbors of County of Arthas. A region that's currently in the middle of a civil war between two lords. So all refugees poured into the once peaceful region and started causing all sorts of trouble. Some are hunting illegally, some turn to the life of crime, others back on the street and try to do anything in their power to feed families. Over the course of the game, you can either help refugees or the locals in conflicts that arise. Depending on who you help the most, one of two leaders will call you. If you help locals, it will be a local mayor. Or a refugee king, if you help them. Both of them will ask to help with a few tasks, and in the end you will lead a final assault against the problem. Either refugees or a local woman. It's a nice little story posing some interesting questions without clear answers about right or wrong, and overall payout is a job well done and a free ticket to the next region. Who knows, maybe you are the missing link to ending the civil war next door. Go there and see for yourself. Besides that, there are great mysteries to uncover, but I will let you figure it out. It's a nice payoff without anything fancy, but I would gladly play a sequel set in the times before the plague, because mysteries that are there are very interesting. And now let's talk about cons. There is not enough game. I played 80 hours of this and I saw all the content there is and it's not a joke, I'm an addict and I want more. Region based progression is terrible. I know it's just my problem and kids call this skill issue, but I will complain nonetheless. Leveling gets stupidly slow at some point around level 6 and getting higher levels feels like a slog. I would like to have helmets on my guys, this is clearly a dangerous working environment and there is a lot of OSHA violations, and sometimes I get this weird stuttering during my playtime. I bet that one guy who actually watches reviews and not just listen to them noticed it. None of it is a big problem to me and I still enjoyed my time with the game, so, you know, don't let it scare you. So, since I was making this video for so long, developers had time to release few updates, they fixed starting, they added helmets, they fixed leveling to be less grindy and they promised us a new region in the roadmap. So, there is only one cone left and it's me hating region based progression. So, let's hope they see this video and remove this from the game. And now to my verdict. This is a type of game where you either lose 100 hours playing it or bounce right off in the first few of them. Man, I hope there's some system to play a game for a few hours and see for yourself if you like it or not, but I suggest you give it a go and decide for yourself. Developers clearly love the game and want to make it better. And this is so rare these days that I think they deserve your purchase just based on that. Because you know, they could have made helmets and blood into a separate DLC and spoon fed us new content for $10 each, but we got them for free and I respect them. I give this game a solid 9 creeps working hard under command of one Twitch streamer who will definitely notice them out of 10. That's it, bye.